Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm The Legit Creep and I'm a professional body piercer. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing a very, very important topic and that is why gun piercings are bad and why they should be eliminated. <laughs> So let's get right into it and let's start with the first fact that they are so damn traumatizing. And when I say traumatizing, I don't just mean psychologically traumatizing because they are that too, but they also are super traumatizing to the body. So to the skin, to the selected body part that is being pierced, there is a lot of trauma that goes on there and it is blunt force trauma. It essentially causes a lot of problems and this is because of the tissue damage that the ear or the body part endures because of this gun piercing. If you compare it to a needle piercing, basically what a needle does is it slides through very easily because of how sharp the needle is and it makes an incision that takes away a small piece of skin that the jewelry can then fit into. Whereas when you're using a gun, it's basically just pounding. It's basically just pounding that jewelry through, like just shoving it through, forcing it through, blunt force trauma. It basically causes tears and trauma to the skin because it's sort of just going like ripping through as opposed to the glide through that the needle would do because it's making way for the jewelry. Whereas this is just shoving the jewelry straight through. Mostly these gun piercings are used on the earlobe, but they're also used in the cartilage on the ear. Some people use them on noses. Some people use them on their navels as well. It is crazy the amount of places that people will try to use these guns on eyebrows. Like, and some of these are like stores that are like, selling the procedure of the piercing to clients. They're selling it to them. They're performing it on them. So it's not all just done at home. Like some of these crazy, crazy things are done in stores, which is so disgusting and should not be done. And this is just a snowball effect of all the problems and issues that arise from getting one of these gun piercings. There's actually a really cool video. I can insert it here showing the difference. You can see how the needle slides through really easily in comparison to the gun just shoving the jewelry through. Going on from that, from the trauma, the healing then becomes a whole nother issue. Now I'm sure a lot of you out there have had piercings with guns and it may have been a long, long time ago. I can even say that I had piercings with guns when I was younger and you will probably find that the healing period of getting these gun piercings is extremely long. Some people like to play it out as, oh, your body's just taking a long time to heal. It's just your body. It's just your body. It's your body. It's your body. But it's not your body. It's the fact that all that trauma has caused the body to go, what the? And it doesn't know what's happening. And it's trying to heal this piercing, but it cannot do it. So it's just a prolonged, if not never ending cycle of trying to heal it and then it never heals as well. That's a common thing is that the piercing will never heal. And because of this trauma, and if it hasn't healed properly, generally a lot of them won't heal properly. And then in turn, this can cause problems through the entire piercing's life, basically. And what I mean by that is people generally have more flare-ups down the line. You might bump your piercing and then it is healing all over again. This is not something you want to be happening because it's clearly a problem with the piercing and it never got healed properly. Another issue is the jewelry that is used to do these piercings. The jewelry either comes like inside those little piercing guns, like those little ones off like Amazon and stuff, or like people load them into those big, like big boys. And they either normally have like the butterfly backs or they have like those like safety, safety <laughs> backings on them that is, I'll put photos of them in. There are so many problems with this jewelry. This could be a whole video on its own because I can tell you the damn problems that are wrong with butterfly backs, my God. We see them come into the studio a lot. They've got pierced somewhere with a gun to begin with and they want their jewelry changed or they're coming to us with an issue that's going on with the pierced with a gun piercing. There's just so many problems involved. The jewelry that you have in these guns is not, it's not good. It's not of a high enough standard or quality. Generally, you'll find they're like a sterling silver, a surgical steel, something like that. Potentially even a lower grade than that, like 
don't even talk to me about that. And also potentially like plated jewelry that can tarnish and can flake even sometimes, especially those ones that come in the ones off Amazon. I would say that would be extremely, extremely low quality jewelry. And I reckon it would tarnish, turn green. Ugh, I can't even, I don't even know why people put those in their body. Can't say the same for what's in the stores. They probably more likely have like a surgical steel, but it's still not good enough for an initial piercing. And also the jewelry itself, why is there a noise in the background? I'm so sorry that's happening. It's so annoying. I can't even believe that that is happening. It sounds like a printer. Why are you doing that? The jewelry is not long enough for swelling. When you pierce someone, you assess the body and what type of jewelry will be put into their particular body because everyone is different shapes and sizes and it's not a one size fits all, but these Pieces of jewelry in piercing guns are one size fits all. They all are the exact same size. As the jewelry is forced through the ear, the backing is also forced on, which means it could be put on far too tight. Even at the like loosest setting that you can have like a butterfly back on, it doesn't suit everyone's body, everyone's earlobes. It's not suited for that. Some people have quite thick earlobes and putting one of them into their ears will see so many issues. It will sink into the ear. The body will try and grow over the jewelry. There's just so many problems problems that can happen and that's because body jewelry should not be a one size fits all. That's what they have made gun piercings to be. One size fits all. The amount of people I have seen come in and we've had to change the jewelry to a librette bar because they've been pierced with a butterfly back stud and the body's either grown over it or it's like sinking in because it's swelling so much. Like it's not one size fits all. Not to mention the gunk that can build up in those filthy, filthy butterflies, like sickening. I know I've spoken about the Amazon um, gun piercing, like gun piercing machine things. I don't know, you know, those, those little ones are like, like that. You've seen them all over the internet. I know you've seen them. Piercing guns, especially ones that when you go into a store, like a mall kiosk, those ones, they are not single use and they cannot be sterilized. They're made of plastic, so they can't be put in an autoclave. So essentially they are extremely, extremely unsanitary. Even if they're wiping it down with an alcohol swab, between piercings, that is not good enough. The body's reaction to blunt force trauma is actually to send blood to the area, which then causes like a whole lot of swelling. And that's what happens when you get an ear piercing with a gun. And trust me, you do not want one of those things embedded in your ear. It will not be a fun time to get out. Even though you may not see any blood, there is small amounts of blood that can like essentially splatter that you won't see that will go onto the piercing gun, especially because it's being forced through. <sighs> There's so many, so many problems with this because an alcohol wipe, it's not enough for cross-contamination to be like eliminated. That is what you need an autoclub for. So if there are even small particles of blood going on to one of those piercing guns, that can be so, so ridiculously dangerous. That's where the transmission of diseases can occur through blood. That is that's that's a huge part of what we get trained on it's it like it stresses me out if you can't see i know like back in the day piercing studios and tattoo studios were looked at like oh my god don't go there don't like engage in that kind of activity because you're gonna get hep b like they all are gonna give it to you like no matter which one you go to they're disgusting and when you think about it it's insane to think that like these piercing piercing places that people are taking their children to are far more likely to be transmitting those kinds of diseases than your tattoo studio and your piercing studio because we have to follow such strict, strict guidelines and health re regulations, whereas these other places don't. And yes, if there's a splatter of blood that they think they could wipe it away with an alcohol swab, that's not enough. That's why we autoclave all of our tools and all of our jewelry prior to every single piercing because we can't be having any transmission of anything. We couldn't just wipe our tools down with alcohol and be done with it, call it a day, no. And somehow these places that many parents will take their children think it's okay to just give it a little wipe with an alcohol swab. Stresses me out so much. That's the point in having like single use needles is because we're not gonna reuse that needle on someone else and I know it's not the same thing as like the gun going through, you're not 
using the same earring, but you're using the same equipment, which is heightening that potential contamination. I can't stress enough how badly you shouldn't be going to those places. The risk isn't worth it for the price. You want to pay less for the price. No, no, pay more, get the standard and get the safety that you need and deserve. And then that also brings us to the training. Now the training that the people have that use these guns is like, is extremely low. Like I don't know about the rest of the world. Places in Australia that do piercings like that are like chemists, are like retail staff member. They normally get shown a few times, maybe watch like a little informative video about how to, and then they do it. And then obviously they do a bunch and like they might get better at it, but it doesn't compare to the training that we piercers have gone through. Ours is an extensive, extensive training period from months to years that we have to go through in order to be qualified. Not only that, but a huge part of it is learning about the safety. So bloodborne pathogens, cross-contamination, infection control, all of that knowledge must be consumed by us before we can even pick up a needle. It's so important. It's such an important part of the whole thing and people doing these gun piercings don't know a goddamn thing about it. Why would you want to be getting pierced by someone who doesn't know anything about the safety behind it? Not only that, but someone who's learnt it in a very, very short amount of time and they're but you're basically just a guinea pig to them. We know the exact angle, we know the exact jewelry, we know the exact speed to go. And when you see a lot of these places doing these piercings, you can see that they're not really in control. They're just sort of like guessing, like we'll just put it here and, and have a bloody blast. And then that brings me to another part of it, which is the control. When you have a needle and when you've been trained in it and you have had a lot of experience, you know, exactly how the needle is going to work, how it's going to perform, the speed and the force that you need to use it with. Like we know all this. When you've done enough piercings, it just becomes second nature and you just know exactly how it's going to go down. With a gun, they're so inconsistent. They get stuck, they go in at the wrong angle, someone moves and then the gun goes in the wrong place and there's just so many problems with it. That is the issue. The amount of people who will ask if they can get a piercing done with a gun because it hurts less is so insane. Like people will come into a piercing studio and ask to get it done with a gun when they can't get it done with a gun, but they ask to because they're like, oh, it hurts less. I know it hurts less with the gun. And you're like, mm, you're wrong. A needle can actually be so much quicker. And because of the way it is pierced, that is actually making it hurt less for you because it's not causing that trauma and like ripping through. I feel like this is the best way to describe it. If you've ever had a graze where it's like just ripped you up, that shit hurts. If you've ever had a clean like glass cut or something like that, it just slices you on open, but it doesn't really hurt. You don't really realize the pain. You realize the blood because it bleeds a lot. You don't really notice the pain because it's not as bad. That is like, that's the best way I can describe a ear piercing with a gun to one with a needle. The needle's so quick and swift and just slides through. Whereas the gun is like, <sighs> let's just ruin your ear basically. It is surprising to a lot of people because the needle sounds bad. An earring doesn't sound as bad, but it's the fact that it's blunt force trauma and it's forcing its way through as opposed to sliding through. It's easier. So go with this one. I hope I've covered everything in that video. There's a lot to cover when it comes to gun piercings because they're just so goddamn wrong. But I really hope you got the gist of it and you understand that they are eh, 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 eh. don't do it. They're so sheet. Just don't do it. Like it's not gonna be a fun time. It's not gonna be a fun healing process. It's not gonna be a fun time when they're pierced incorrectly because the gun has gone at the wrong angle. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like down below. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel and I will be back very soon. All right, bye.